What is going on, Radar Force? Uh, today, I have a massive collection update video, and yesterday, I announced that I started collecting the games, and it's been one day since I started collecting the games, and I have them all. And, uh, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna just go through a massive, massive, uh, updating. I kind of, I kind of just was messing with you guys. Uh, I've been collecting, collecting these games for about a month and a half. I did a lot. I did, I did a lot of work uh, on uncovering these games, and I kept it secret because there's a lot of, a lot of competition with collecting, uh, with friends of mine, so I'm, like, trying to keep it under wraps so I don't have to worry about if I find something rare, people are going to steal it from me. Or whatever, so I just kept it on the rug, and we're done now, and <laughs> pretty great. So I'm gonna I'm gonna turn this camera on, and we're gonna get right into the games. Uh, and f and here in front of your eyeballs is all of the games that I deemed uh, worthy to be on the list. This is all uh, of the U.S. Dragon Ball video games uh, that were released in the U.S. Um, there's a total of seventy. That's including the one box set and all the collector's editions and whatnot. Um, as I mentioned in the video yesterday, I do not collect like every version of the game, such as uh, let's say Rage and Blast for the Xbox 360 and the PS3. I'm only getting one copy unless there was a specified edition, like Burst Limit. The PlayStation 3 has an exclusive box set uh, version compared to the Xbox that has a standard and the bonus DVD version. Uh, if if other if other game consoles have different um, releases, I get those if it's it's exclusive to the set. Uh, kind of like the Nintendo Switch, the Jump Force Deluxe Edition. I got the Nintendo Switch. That was the only one to have a physical copy of the Deluxe version. Stuff like that. Uh, other than that, I just choose the console of my choice. I prefer Xbox because I enjoy uh, the Halo series, so I enjoy Xbox. I'm an Xbox fan. So... I got all the versions of the Xbox games that I could, and the rest I just got PlayStation because PlayStation has more exclusive Dragon Ball games uh, uh, rather than Xbox. But uh, we're going to dive deep. I'm going to go over all 70 real quick, and uh, hope you guys enjoy this massive, massive collection update video. Okay, and starting off with the earliest release of uh, a Dragon Ball video game in the United States is on the Nintendo Entertainment System, otherwise known as the NES. Um, this is Dragon Power. Uh, now they, the Japan had a game of this, and it was I don't know the name of it. I don't care for the uh, games outside of the U.S. But there was a J Japanese version of this game. Uh, the name was different, but when they ported over to America, uh, of course, this was in 1988, I believe. We changed the name to Dragon Power and changed the character, which was supposed to be Goku, to this dude. Uh, but this is. A Dragon Ball game. I, um, do your research and you'll know. It says the quest is for the Dragon Seven Crystal Balls. The prize, your greatest wish, together with Goku and Nora. So it is go. It, it is a Dragon Ball game. Believe it or not, uh, I'm actually going to buy an NES so I can play this on the channel. Uh, but I have yet to get an NES. But yeah, that is the very first game, Dragon Power. Uh, super dope and super awesome to have it in the box and everything complete. And we we'll move on to the Game Boy games. Uh, unfortunately, in the United States, we did not get a release of the Game Boy, uh, the original Game Boy. But instead, we have one game released in the Game Boy Color, which is Super Legendary Super Warriors. Uh, the rest are released on the Game Boy Advance. And we're going to get right into this. So, uh, And I'm not sure of the release dates uh, in the chronological order, but I'm just assuming the Game Boy Color was uh, before. Uh, and the only game we got in Game Boy Color was the Legendary Super Warriors. This is like a card game type deal. Uh, I'm super excited to play this. Oh, this one is not sealed. It's actually open. Uh, all of my games are open besides like one. But yeah, I've started playing the Game Boy games as if you watch my Legacy of Goku series and a few of the DS games. But yeah, uh, Legendary Super Warriors. Uh, now moving on to Legacy of Goku 1, which is the game I'm currently playing on the Game uh, Boy for my channel. Uh, Legacy of Goku 1. It's a uh, super good game. Unfortunately, I got a little scratch on the back there, but uh, everything else is complete. Uh, super awesome. I love the Game Boy games. No favorite releases, just because the, the boxes are hard to find, and it's super nostalgic. Uh, moving on to 
Legacy of Goku 2. I cannot wait to play this game. Uh, here, so awesome. I'm going to move a little bit quicker. I will do product reviews of all these, and you get the high-quality white background for all these. Uh, now we have a decently rare and expensive game. Uh, Dragon Ball Z Boo's Fury, which is technically Legacy of Goku 3. Uh, I love this trilogy. I've never played them, but I, I heard it's I heard good things about them. Cannot wait to get in there. And here is uh, Dragon Ball GT Transformation, which a lot of people like to say this is the fourth installment of the Legacy of Goku series. Uh, I don't, I'm not sure if that's true or not. The gameplay is slightly different. It's like a side scroller instead of like an on top view of the map. I don't know. A lot of people consider it the fourth installment. I don't know. Uh, I'll get onto that later. Uh, and here we have a double pack, the Legacy of Goku 1 and 2, two games in one. This contains Legacy of Goku 1 and 2, obviously. Uh, I love these releases too because it's just, it looks super dope to uh, have them all on one game. And this brings up the thing about uh, Transformation being the fourth installment. It has the uh, Boo Boo's Fury and Transformation in one cartridge here, uh, two games in one. Uh, I don't. I think they were made by the same people, but the games are totally different, as you can see the pictures. Like the GT one's a side scroller, while the other one's kind of like uh, on top view. But I don't know. I'm gonna count them together as a four set thing. I don't know. People say it's a trilogy. I don't know. Uh, next we have Trunks. Trunks, not Trunks. We have Dragon Ball Z collectible card game. Uh, this game is probably one of the worst. I don't. I don't know. I'm gonna play it though on the channel. At, uh, and here we have Taiketsu. This is probably the worst game released ever, probably. Uh, it look Everything looks wonky. Look at Vegeta, man. It just looks wonky, but that's Taiketsu. I'm excited to play them all, though. Then you have Supersonic Warriors 1 for the GBA. I actually own Supersonic Warriors 2 for the DS as a kid. I'm super hyped to play this um, two-part series. And here we have the rarest Dragon Ball game on uh, Game Boy. Probably the rarest Dragon Ball game. Uh, it's debatable, though. We have Advanced Adventure for Dragon Ball. I am super excited to play this game. You might as well put this one above Legacy of Goku and do the whole installment of five games. But it's like a side-scroller. It's super awesome. I've heard very good things about that game. Excited to play that. And that is it for the Game Boy Advance games for Dragon Ball. Okay, and moving on to the... Nintendo DS and uh, 3DS games, um, and I'm not going in chronological order, I'm just going in order of the easiest, to my knowledge. So, for the DS we had five releases, and for the 3DS we had two. Uh, so, first game I'm going to talk about is Dragon Ball Z, I'm, I'm assuming this is pronounced Haru Kanaru Densetsu. This is like a card game as well, uh, I'm excited to play that, uh, definitely. And... Uh, Dragon Ball Z Attack of the Sands, which you guys say, saw like a few days ago on my channel. I started playing this one. It's super fun. Uh, Attack of the Sands. It's it's kind of like a strategic game. It's not really a card game. I don't know what you'd call it, really. Uh, next is a game I had since I was a kid. This is uh, Dragon Ball Z Super Sonic Warriors. This is the sequel to the one on the Game Boy Advance that I just covered. Uh, this game I adored as a kid, and I can't wait to play it again. I never actually finished beating it, so I'm super excited to do that. And all here is two games that I'm super excited to play. That is Dragon Ball Origins uh, 1 and Origins 2. I am super pumped to play this game. These games look so fun to play. Um, and then the 3DS games <laughs> don't look that great to me. But uh, we have Extreme Extreme Butoden for the 3DS. Um, I have not seen this, but the gameplay mechanics looks pretty good as a fighter game. And then... Last but not least, we have Dragon Ball Fusions, and I actually have no idea if this game is any good. Uh, nonetheless, I am excited to play all these games. I want to document and record all of them for the channel, for you guys, and for myself. It's going to be a fun ride. We're going to play them all and hopefully beat them all. Uh, and that is it for uh, the Nintendo DS games. Okay, I decided to go to the PSP next, uh, just for the pure fact that there's only four games and it's fast to cover. So, uh, I can't wait to play these games. Uh, they all seem really good, except for uh, Evolution. Well, let me let me just go into it. So the first game we got here is Dragon Ball Evolution, the movie, basically. Um, I don't know if this game is any good. <laughs> Probably not. But the freaking game mechanics, I looked at the trailer. The game mechanics look, like, pretty good. But whether or not it's any good at all. The, the two I'm really excited for is Shin Budokai series. Um, it looks like they use, like, the Budokai 3 engine. 
I am super pumped to play this game. Um, it, it looks like legitimate Budokai 3D. Budokai 3 is my favorite console game. Dragon Ball Online is my favorite uh, Dragon Ball game ever. Uh, it might change other planets. Here is Shin Budokai, Another Road, which is a sequel to Shin Budokai. Uh, super excited to play these games. And a, a super rare title for in the U.S. is Tenkaichi Tag Team. It's like a $100 game. Um, this game I'm... I'm excited for as well. People say it's the best one on the PSP. I think I'm going to like these two better just because I'm a Budokai 3 fan. Uh, but this might be like the Tenkaichi 3, which is, I heard is an awesome game as well. But that's the it for the PSP games, all four of them. Uh, now we're going to cover the PS1. Okay, and for the PS1 we have three releases but two games. So here we have the 1997 version of Final Bout. Uh, this was the first... Uh, well, second Dragon Ball game released in the United States. Um, first one with that with Dragon Ball in the name, Dragon Power being the first one, which was in 1988. This is the, I believe, quote me if I'm wrong, the first Dragon Ball release in the United States other than Dragon Power. Uh, this is a rare one. This is like a $100 game. This is the official, uh, not official, original release of this game with alternate artwork. The original artwork, uh, but final bout for the PlayStation. Here we have the 2004 release. Of Dragon Ball GT, the final bout. This is like a $20 game. Nothing special. The artwork's just different compared to the original. And here we have uh, Ultimate Battle 22. Um, this These games look like straight doo-doo. Uh, I don't know what to expect. I don't know if there's a storyline or not, but I am going to want to play those definitely for the channel. But that is it for the PlayStation 1 games. And moving on to probably the best console ever that hosted... Dragon Ball games, or whatever you want to call it, not hosted, but had Dragon Ball games. It was the PlayStation 2. Uh, this probably has the most releases of Dragon Ball on it. Um, we're going to start over here with Sagas, probably the worst game of the bunch here. We got Dragon Ball Z Sagas for the PS2. I also own it for the Xbox. But like I said, I don't count like alternate console releases unless there's an exclusive like limited edition to that set or whatever. Uh, so I only y'all want one copy of this unless... Uh, like there's an alternate artwork for another console so yeah i'm not getting all console releases and i've stated that many times anyways uh here's dragon ball uh, sagas for the ps2 then we have the budokai series there's budokai one uh i don't never played that game fully i might have played a little bit uh budokai 2 i definitely had as a kid and budokai 3 which is my favorite console game ever and here we have the freaking rare limited edition version of budokai 3 uh, my game inside here is actually sealed. Uh, this is a super, super dope set here. Uh, I will do this definitely do product reviews of the Budokai series. And funny enough, like this was supposed to have the greatest hits version in it. Did not have the greatest hits version. Here's the greatest hits version. And I counted this in my collection. I don't count greatest hits or like player choice games or anything like that. Unless there's an exclusive artwork change. And uh, uh, of course there's an artwork change on this one. And the... Uh, there's new characters in here, or new skins on the Greatest Hits version, so I had to get that one because I love Budokai 3. Uh, but yeah, it's alternate artwork, so I had to count it. And then the last of that trilogy, which is the fourth fourth, uh, fourth game in that series, is Infinite World. Uh, never played it, and I'm super excited to play the game. I heard it's really good. And here we have the Dragon Ball Z trilogy set. This is a box set, the only box set uh, that was released in game format for Dragon Ball, which comes with Tenkaichi 1. Tenkaichi 2, and Super Dragon Ball Z, and I have them in this order because, and yeah, uh, they're supposed to, it's supposed to be Tenkaichi 1, Tenkaichi 2, and then Super Dragon Ball Z, but I like doing it in this order just for the pure fact that I can display my Tenkaichi 3 for the PlayStation 2 right behind it with spine art so it actually makes sense together. That's why I did that. Uh, I don't know why they didn't include Tenkaichi 3 in the set. It's kind of dumb. It's a trilogy set. I don't know why... That game is even in here. But that's how it is. It's how it's supposed to be. Uh, and then moving on along from the trilogy set, we have Tenkaichi 3. Uh, this is the Black Label original release. And I'm including the Wii version on here because this is the uh, bonus disc version. And I got it for the Wii because I didn't know which version to get. Uh, because the Wii, the Wii, Wii has HD graphics and, the, uh, and has online play at the time. Uh, this one... I mean, it's it's obviously a super rare game. It's like a two hundred dollar game. I got mine for eighty. I was pretty lucky. Uh, 
But now I'm glad I got this version. I was going to get the black label for that, but I'm super glad I got both versions. Um, this, apparently on the PlayStation 2, you can fuse Tenkaichi 1 and 2 to get extra bonus content in here. So I'm super excited that I got it for the PlayStation 2, so I could do that. And then here's the bonus disc version of Tenkaichi 3 for the Wii. There is a bonus disc version for PS2, but I figured why spend another $200 when I can just get this one. And I have a copy for the Wii and the PlayStation 2. Uh, so I had to get both of those. And that is it for the PlayStation 2 games. Um, I love the PlayStation 2 games. Uh, well, at least the Budokai series. And I'm definitely going to play them all. And I'm super pumped. Uh, that is it for PlayStation 2. And now moving on to the Wii. This is the only Wii exclusive Dragon Ball game. And this is what I've heard. A super good game. Revenge of King Piccolo. And I'm a fan of original Dragon Ball games. Boy, am I a fan. Uh, this game is quite rare as well. Well, rare is the wrong word. Quite expensive. Uh, it's like a $80 game. I got mine for like $45. Uh, you can find it cheaper if you're on the lookout. Uh, and I, earlier, obviously, I had Tenkaichi 3 for the Wii. Which, these are not exclusives, obviously. I also, I also bought Tenkaichi 2 because I wasn't going to get um, Tenkaichi 3 for the PS2 just for the price. And then I realized, I heard somewhere that you could transfer Tenkaichi 2 um, saves or whatever characters or content to Tenkaichi 3. So, they're, okay, well, I'll just get Tenkaichi 1 for PS2, Tenkaichi 2 and 3 for the Wii, since the third one's so expensive. Well, apparently you can't do that on the Wii. So, ended up, obviously, you guys saw that I got Tenkaichi 1 all the way through 3 for the PS2 as well. Uh, and no PS, I mean, no, the Wii did not have Tenkaichi 1 for the Wii. So I do have these two, which this one's, I guess, not included in my collection because I don't need it. But I'll probably keep it just in case. I don't know if I am going to enjoy the PS2 version or the Wii version better, but I'll probably have to play the PS2 version just because I have the trilogy on there. But the only well, exclusive game is Revenge of King Piccolo. But I just wanted to note that to give them some shout-outs. Oh, well, this one actually is a part of my collection because it is the second version alternate artwork of Tenkaichi 3 because it has the bonus disc. But yeah, that is it for the week. Okay, moving on to the Xbox 360 games. Uh, well, Xbox. Well, anyway, it's Xbox 360 games. Uh, earlier I said that I I'm not getting every release for each console because that'd be ridiculous because it'd be the same crap. I'm, unless it's alternate all works, as I have probably said a million times in this video already. I just like to make it clear. Um, uh, I'm an Xbox fan, so I just got all the games I could for Xbox. Uh, so yeah. I even have sagas for Xbox over there underneath. <laughs> These two don't actually go in my collection, but I do. I do have it for the Xbox. Uh, I have. I, I ended up keeping the PlayStation 2 version because that would actually have all. I would own all the PS2 versions ever, which is awesome. Uh, but yeah, uh, starting with the next gen, which was the next gen at the time, Xbox 360, is the burst limit black label. Uh, there's no other exclusive bullcrap on it, and burst limit the bonus disc version, which has. <laughs> The Orange Brick Disc 1, Season 1, uh, of Dragon Ball Z in it. Um, I had to include it because freaking, freaking I hate when games do this. And Xbox 360 and PS3 and all the new games have so many releases, it's so aggravating. But yeah, bonus disc version. And I am going to include the PlayStation 3 version right now because it has its own exclusive release, which is why I had to get it. it this includes, it's, it's a box set, but it includes uh, the standard copy of Burst Limit. And Dead Zone digitally remastered by itself in a PlayStation 3 case. Uh, but yeah, this is the PlayStation 3 version of Dead Zone. Which, for some reason, I guess Microsoft couldn't get that version. So they got the bonus DVD because, you know, 360 didn't, couldn't play Blu-ray. So I guess that's why they did that. Uh, I will I will include this in the PS3 section in a minute. Uh, moving on, we have Raging Blast 1, Raging Blast 2. And all of these have PS3 counterparts. Well, all of them do, except for a few. Then we have uh, Ultimate Tenkaichi, also has a PlayStation 3 counterpart. We have Budokai HD Collection, which is awesome, because I love Budokai series. Uh, this one, I saw the this alternate artwork online, and I was like, crap, there's an alternate artwork version. Well, and then I, I did some research, and they said it is a reversible slipcover. Well, I did some digging, and uh, there's actually a version... That does not have the reversible cover. See right here it says... Hold on, let me get the other one out. See, this one right here is the reversible version. It says right here, it is a collectible double-sided cover inside. 
Well, this one you can flip around and it has the same artwork as this one. But this one must have been the original release because the PS3 and the Xbox 360 version does not have that third bullet point that says flippable. So technically, there's two versions of this game out there. And that's why I had to get both versions. One is double-sided and one is not. Uh, so that's cool. I was actually upset at first because I ordered it and realized, dang, I could have just kept my copy and had it reversible. But there's actually two prints. One with it and one without it. So that's why I got both of those. And here is, I believe, the only Xbox exclusive game, which is the Dragon Ball Z 4 Connect. i uh, kind of excited to play this game, even though I heard it's garbage. That is the only non-Xbox 360. That's the only Xbox 360 game that doesn't have a PS3 counterpart. Uh, after that, we have Battle of Z, and you guys are really going to just hate me for this. Uh, I have two copies of Battle of Z. This is the black label with no bullcrap on it, and this is the stupid, stupid, it has Naruto costume DLC inside. And when I saw that, I was like, really? I'm going to have to get another copy because that's an alternate artwork, and it oh, it bothers me so much that games do that now. So I had to get both of those versions as much. How, as stupid as it is, I had to get it because of that. But there's two Battle of Z versions. Also, PS3 has the same bullcrap. And here we have Xenoverse The Day 1 Edition, which came with a pre-order steelbook, which is together with this one set. That does not, this counts as one release right here, not two. So I have the pre-order with the steelbook right here, Day 1 Edition. Uh, and now I'm going to move to the... We're going to move on to the PS3 next. And here are the only games on for the PS3. As you guys know, as you guys know I'm an Xbox fanboy. And as I mentioned earlier, here is Burst Limits PS3 exclusive box set version, which comes with the Dead Zone Blu-ray. Uh, like I said, here's the other releases of Burst Limits, standard copy, bonus DVD version, and the bonus Blu-ray version. Uh, and here we have J Stars versus uh, J Stars Victory versus, which is a crossover of anime. I decided to get it because it technically has Dragon Ball in it. Uh, there is a PS4 version, but like I said, you don't need both versions because it's the same cover, no difference in artwork. So I got the PS3 version just because I want another PS3 game instead of PS4. Okay, now moving to the Xbox One releases. Um, starting with Xenoverse, uh, funny enough, Xenoverse had an Xbox 360 launch, Xbox One launch, had a Day One Edition launch, uh, had the Pre-Order Steelbook Edition, which I'm going to get into now. This is the Black Label. I decided to get the Black Label on Xbox One so I can play it on my Xbox Series X for the channel which would be upgraded graphics uh, here is the day one edition right here day one edition uh, for the 360 I, I wanted one for the 360 because that was like the release and here is the pre-order version of the day one edition and then here is the black label here so that's all the releases of uh, Xenoverse 1 let's move those out the way here uh, Xenoverse 2 is a complicated boy and it actually threw me off for a little bit. So here is Xenoverse 2 was an Xbox One exclusive, well not exclusive, Xbox One only release or and PS4, no Xbox 360 or anything. Uh, here is the black label of Xenoverse 2, the original label. Uh, here is the collector's edition to Xenoverse 2, uh, which comes with a figurine, uh, a Xenoverse Day One edition. So I don't have to get that one. It has a Day One edition, which is in there. Let's see if I can see it real quick. I'm not going to go into details with it. Yeah, so I got the PS4 version. It also comes with a steelbook, but there's the day one edition of Xenoverse 2 and the steelbook. Uh, I will do a product review of all these, so do not worry. I will cover all of that for you guys in the near future. Uh, but that is Xenoverse 2 uh, Standard, Limited Edition, Collector's Edition. And then we have... I stumbled across this, and there is a deluxe edition of Xenoverse 2, so I had to get that one. I got it for the PS4 because that's the only one I could find of a physical copy. Uh, so so Xenoverse 2 has an original standard disc copy, the deluxe edition, and the day one edition slash collector's edition, which comes together, so no point in getting them separately. Uh, and that is it for Xenoverse 2. And I will cover that again in the PS4 section. Um, moving on to Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball Fighters. Uh, this is the standard copy, uh, the black label. Then you have another confusing one. You have the Fighters Edition, or Fighters Z Edition, however you want to call it. This is it's the only one I can find again for the... I only can find it for the PS4. This one has a slip cover, so keep that in mind if you're collecting to have it complete. Uh, a slip cover. Fighters Z Edition, which comes with DLC and stuff, which is all good and dandy. And then I have the 
Fighter Z Collector's Edition, which comes with, uh, I believe it's a standard. I hope it comes with a Day One Edition. I hope it. I, I can't remember anymore. There's so many bullcrap with nowadays releases. Yeah, see, it comes with a Steelbook and a Day One Edition. So, like I said earlier, you don't need to buy both of them because it comes with the Day One Edition, uh, as you can see right here, and the Steelbook. So, no point in getting the Day One Edition separately when you have uh, the Collector's Edition with it. And just to uh, go back over that, we have uh, the standard copy of Fighter Z, uh, the Fi Fighter's Edition, and the Collector's Edition for that, which includes the Day One Edition. So, and that is it for Fighters. Uh, now moving on to Kakarot. Uh, I have the standard copy here. Luckily and thankfully, they did not do a Day One Edition or any other alternate artwork besides digital bullcrap. Here's the standard copy, and over here I have the collector's edition, which has a figurine, a, an art book, um, steel book, and uh, same as this. There's no other uh, special edition, which is great. Okay, and last and very least, <laughs> we have uh, Jump Force. Jump Force, which is another crossover uh, fighter game that has Dragon Ball in it, so I counted it. Um, here's Jump Force. For the Xbox, this is the standard copy, uh, and Jump Force has a bunch of bullcrap releases. So for the Nintendo Switch, is it has the Deluxe Edition, which you cannot find on Xbox One and the PS4 with a physical copy. So the only way to get a physical copy of it is to have the Switch version. So you have the Switch version there. Uh, the PS4 and I believe the Xbox One, I could not find the Xbox One version. Uh, it has the Ultimate Edition. And I swear, man, games nowadays need to stop releasing so many things because it's going to kill collector's pockets. Now, here's the Ultimate Edition of Jump Force. That was really hard to find because no one really got it. Uh, but there it is. Uh, and then we have the Collector's Edition here for the PS4, which is Jump Force. It has a figurine, games, I believe another still book. I don't know why they do that, but yeah, uh, no Day One Edition either. I don't think if it is, it's included in the Collector's Edition. Uh, but yeah, so you got those four releases, the Standard, Deluxe, Ultimate, and Collector's Edition. Uh, super awesome that they have so many releases, but it, it is aggravating as crap. Uh, and that concludes the Xbox games. Um, I actually don't know why I decided to go to the PlayStation 4. The only games I have in the PlayStation 4 is the Deluxe Edition of Xenoverse 2, which I already covered in the Xbox section. Uh, the Fighters Edition of Fighters, um, which I already covered, and the Ultimate Edition for Jump Force, which I already included. And then these three collectors edition here are PS4 only. Uh, the only one I could get for Xbox for good price is Cacturot. The rest were these three. But that's it of the games I have for the PS4, just so you know. Which I already covered them, but just to get confusion out of there, there they are. Uh, now we're going to move on to... Um, I'm going to just go ahead and do these weird ones here. These are not necessarily... Well, one of them is a handheld, one of them is like a, a TV game. Uh, and I had to get this one sealed because... I like everything being complete in the box. I will buy a used one to play on the channel. Uh, I don't know what you call these. Uh, this is just what I call a Dragon Ball TV game. Uh, I'm really excited to play these. I don't really know what it is or what's on it, but there's a bunch of mini games. I'm super, super excited to play it for the channel. Uh, that's kind of difficult to find for a good price with the box and everything. As a collector, you know you want to end. I decided to get uh, this handheld game, which I probably will not... Well, obviously I can't play on the channel, but... I was like, if I don't get this, someone's going to call me out for saying, oh, you missed this game. Mm. So I got it. Dragon Ball Z Battle for Namek is the name of this game. And uh, I don't really know what it is, but you just kind of collect Dragon Balls, I think, and kill people. But it's not it's not complex. But those are those two bonus games, and I got them sealed because I wanted the packaging. Uh, and I just it decided to include them on my game list because they are technically games, and they are Dragon Ball Z. Luckily, there's no more of those bull craps. It's just those two. So I was like, eh, I might as well get it. Uh, now moving on to, uh, I believe this is it. I believe this is it. The Nintendo Switch games, which uh, there's only three that I own. There is Xenoverse Two, I think, and Fighters. Are the uh, are two like other releases you can get, which I got them for the Xbox One and the PS4, so you didn't need them for the Switch. We have Jump Force, which I included as the deluxe edition only, I believe. Uh, and like I said, you have the collector's edition. Um, the standard and the ultimate for the other ones. And then we have the only Switch exclusive 
game, which is Super Dragon Ball Heroes World Mission Standard Copy. And we got this bullcrap edition, the Hero Edition, which comes with Dragon Ball Super Card Game exclusive, well, not exclusive, but promo pack inside. And I believe some DLC stuff. Nothing too spectacular, but that, that's that. And I believe that's it. I believe that's the entire Dragon Ball game collection. It's it's a lot to take in. And I done put everything up because it's just everywhere. Like I said, there are 70 individual releases. Uh, that's counting one box set. And God Almighty, I finally... took me a month and a half to get all these, which is... To be honest, that's not hard. Games, these games are not as hard as I thought. Like It's not like the VHSs where they're impossible to find. Just with time, effort, and money, you can find them. Uh... So not not as difficult as what I'm still missing from my collection. I'm still missing uh, two things. Give it, uh, and we're on the hunt for those. I'm missing five warriors edited from Fortune Teller Baba Saga uh, VHS, and I'm missing Epic Battles for the GameCube pre-order for Budokai One DVD. Uh, but yes, that is it for this update collection video. It is massive undertaking of all the Dragon Ball Z games. If you enjoyed this uh, video, please subscribe, like, and leave a freaking comment below. You guys are awesome. And stay tuned for another update video or Dragon Ball video. And expect me to play all of these games on the channel. I've already started, so watch those if you haven't. Uh, links probably in right now over here. Uh, all right, guys. See you guys later. Peace.